switching to one weapon can increase my damage at all. It looks like it may be able to. Um, do I have a quiver? Yeah, this will definitely increase my damage quite a bit here. Let's see. I have a 333 now. 383, 421. So that just increased my damage by almost 100 at this point. It's not creepy. Magda said something it's creepy that she thought I was a goat. She believes it fell where only ancients may tread. That makes me think of the drowned temple near the festering woods. I remember you telling me about it. Oh, man. Exactly, Leah. The temple was home to the Nephilim. Leah, so this is the first point where valuable. you get mention you of the Nephilim. And, um, and they kind of... Explain after you talk to them what the hell a Nephilim is. Um, and it's a big story point. And it's kind of interesting how they, they kind of gradually add story points bit after bit after bit. So that you don't have to digest everything at once. I have great power within me too. The only difference oh wow, I do a lot more damage now. Ooh, even my bolas are doing more damage here. It's only happened a few times in my life, and only when I was in grave danger. But something rises up. Yeah, burn it all down. I can't really explain it. A game that was awesome, especially if you like that kind of thing. But kind of really didn't introduce the wider universe too well was um, Mass Effect. The very first Mass Effect, if you didn't know what was going on, or if you didn't read the uh, uh, read the codexes right at the beginning, like as soon as you get to the Citadel, you're kind of freaking lost. You're kind of like, holy shit, there's a million things going on and I don't know what's relevant, what's not, what's this, what's that. And I mean, I think we as gamers got used to that really quickly. Um, but definitely kudos to Blizzard to being able to introduce so many different plot and story points, you know, just gradually over the course of the first act. Because they kind of they kind of slowly paint a picture for you and then once the picture is She's painted, then they kind of get to the really... A relic that the thieves are after. Yeah. Losing my yeah, it's definitely switch. to keep people interested. Tell you. Uh, yeah, there is definitely a delay on the chat. I think it's like 30 seconds to a minute is the standard... Uh, standard Twitch delay. Um, if you become extremely popular... Um, they... Uh, can remove the Raise delay the to girl. a point. The relic belongs to her. You actually but, uh, this tells you know that we're always going to be dealing with some kind of delay. The both of you. Hey, Mass Effect was a good game. Um, a lot of people argue that the other games were retroactively ruined by the ending of the third game. And I'm sure Mass Effect 4 is just going to end up being Dragon's a Dragon Age Inquisition in space. Which granted a lot of people really liked. And I guess it is a fantastic game. But I'm, I don't know. I kind of got burned out on, on Dragon Age in the first... Actually in the very first game. Because there were points where it was like, okay, I've leveled up all the way. There's no other way to level up. But these enemies I'm trying to fight now are way too difficult for me and it has nothing to do with my tactics tactics I just have to keep rolling like re-rolling my my save basically until I get one where I can actually beat it and it also didn't help that I got to the end of the game and you know you fight the big ass dragon spoiler alert blah 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 Fuck it, My it's dear. like a 30-year-old so game, and I know that's, it's not actually 30 years old, but you know. But you're fighting this dragon, and the dragon would one-shot me at that point, and I had built my character to be a tank that could take, you know, ridiculous amounts of hits. So the fact that it could one-shot me right away pissed me off. Um, and it ended up 
uh, what is it, what is it? I ended up being able to glitch the boss and just get the boss stuck on, uh, uh, some landscaping and then just shoot it to death with a fucking ballista. tell me that you're not considering this criminal proposal. And that's how I beat Dragon Age Origins, or, yeah, Dragon Age Origins. But you made a promise to your betrothed. Betrothed? <laughs> Fuck the game. Like, it was, it was definitely a really good game. And it was a really good story, and it introduced a lot of cool stuff, but... Uh, do I want to replace the Templar with the Scoundrel? No, I do not. I need my tank. Because I am a worth worthless glass cannon. I do not want to be burnt out. I thought it was a myth. And yeah, I do agree that Mass Effect is a fantastic game, and it, and it's one of the pinnacles of RPG gaming, especially in modern day RPGs. But you gotta admit, the first time you got in there, there was just so much shit to it. You know what I mean? It it had a problem as a video game that Star Trek, a, a show that it's more or less based off of, didn't. Uh, whereas, you know, Star Trek could introduce, you know, a new element to the universe every episode, basically to, or, yeah, every episode, basically to keep you interested. This is like, here it is all at once. I wouldn't even say I'm cannon fodder, I would say I'm, like, he's definitely the demon hunter and the wizard classes are... Definitely the archetypal glass cannons, you know, the characters that can't take a fucking hit to save their lives, but holy shit do they do damage, so they better be hiding behind somebody. Which is the whole point of the character. And it's really cool. And they can definitely hold their own, you know, it's not like you have to play with somebody else or you're going to die. Kind of thing. Um, and they did a really good job balancing the characters to be markedly different while also, you know, being able to solo the entire game. But it adds a really cool multiplayer dynamic. There we go. I like being able to jump in, drop my traps, and then vault out. I'm having some issues. Guys. No, I want to run away. There we go. I want to run away! Yeah, and I mean, the fact that the Codex is in there, and there's basically an entire book of information that the game later on assumes you read and understand. You know, they give you the basic story in Mass Effect. They're like, here you are, you're this guy, you need to do this to stop this guy from, you know, bringing basically the Grim Reaper back to kill everybody and cause the apocalypse. Uh, but then you start dealing with other races, and you start dealing with interspecies politics, etc., etc. And it's just like... You know, they get the point across well enough at the time, but, I mean, they don't really give you much backstory, or they don't really give you much of anything, unless you read the codex. And do, you know, all the dialogue options. Which, I mean, granted, in a game like Mass Effect, if you're playing it the way it's designed to be played, you want to do everything. And, I mean, the setting and everything... This, the whole setting of the game, the way the game is designed, really kind of incentivizes you to do it, and it makes it fun to, you know, go, go explore every little thing. Like, I remember times where I'd just make myself, like, a big-ass pot of stroganoff and spend an entire day reading through the codex and just doing side missions in Mass Effect. And it was great. It was awesome. It was an awesome way to spend, you know, a weekend day or whatever. Great RPG. They really hope they don't cock up Mass Effect 4. I enjoy hunting evil creatures through strange new lands. Watch them throw tons of microtransactions into it. You know, Mass Effect 3 had fucking microtransactions. Now that I think about it, I didn't recognize it as microtransactions at the time. 
because it wasn't it wasn't as blatant as uh, you know like a like a like a plants versus zombies a garden warfare or you know a, a mobile game. But holy shit, there those there's like you know here you you can spend money to unlock these packs if you want to unlock these packs you know you can unlock weapons and stuff faster and maybe you can get new characters it's like no fuck that give me give me a progression system that allows me to unlock that not randomly because i hate random shit that's one of the reasons i i can't stand and don't want to play any destiny is just because the 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 loot drop system is completely random in a game where it shouldn't be random you know, some some randomness to it is fine. You know, like like these two or three items can drop from this boss. That's fine. World of Warcraft did that. So you knew, okay, I need to do this raid in order to pick up this piece of gear so that I can, you know, progress basically to the next level so I can do better in the next raid I do. Oh, shit. That's an explosion I want to stay away from. Death has a way. But in, in Destiny, it's just completely random. You know, Bioware isn't the same Bioware that it used to be. So, like, yeah, kudos to Bioware for being able to pump out an awesome game without the Doctors there, but the Doctors were really the driving force behind all the, you know, super creative IPs that they came out with. I mean, they created Dragon Age, uh, they created... Uh, Mass Effect, Jesus Christ, I hate this arcane shit. This is trouble for me. This is trouble for a character like me that's designed around getting far away and staying put for a certain amount of time. I need to get away. So I have I have a feeling Bioware is still going to make good games for a long time because they definitely they built up a good uh, they built up a good crew of people. But I have a feeling that. EA, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the EA politics are going to slowly kind of erode the quality of the games over the course of a couple of years until, I don't know, something else happens. We'll see. Yeah, Destiny, Destiny isn't, I mean, it's a first-person shooter first, but it's, a, it's an MMORPG whether they want to admit it or not. Right, so the fact the fact that it's completely random and you can grind for days and days and days and days and not get the item or the loot drop that you need in order to progress your character is fucking bullshit. Also, the fact that they completely removed any semblance of a story from that fucking game, and you can t and you can tell you can tell it's from you know the the story writers leaving Bungie and all sorts of different stuff like that. It's it's honestly pretty frustrating that that game sold half a billion dollars, like, sell-through in the first month. Because then that just gives, you know, game developers an excuse to make more sloppy games like that. And it's really just sloppy. It's kind of like all these games that are coming out now that, that are completely devoid of a single-player story. Titanfall's fantastic, but I've got to fault it for not having any sort of single-player story. Technically, there's one, but not really. You know what I mean? Um, Evolve is another one where they just completely, you know, just skip the story in order to go for a multiplayer experience, which is really bare bones as shit if you look at it. I mean, there's not nearly enough content in that game to justify a $60 purchase, let alone, what is it, the extra $80 worth of DLC that's there, some of which is just skins that you don't even need. And I mean, one of them is an extra monster. It's like, you shouldn't have to... You shouldn't have to pay for one of the core components of a game. That's like, that's like picking up a you know, a Squaresoft RPG and having to, you know, pay for different characters. That's stupid. I don't know. I feel like sometimes I need to get off my high horse and just appreciate the state of gaming. It could be much better, but it could also be much worse. I don't know, that PlayStation era, PlayStation 1 was still the golden age for me. I mean, 1998 was the greatest year for video games ever. Just the amount of fantastic IPs that came out. 
I mean, 